Hello everybody, it's your boy. Today's video is about drug overdoses. Um, today in the United States, 190 people die of a drug overdose every day. And this is mainly to do with the fentanyl epidemic. When I came out of high school, I graduated Francis Drake High School in 1998 in West Marin, California. And at the time there was a large group of my peers, uh, a couple years older and younger, that all started using Oxycontin recreationally. I remember the first time it was offered to me was in 2000. I know it was going around, but about 2000, I went to watch a boxing match at the Fowler house and their cousin was Vance Scott, a, another Hoppa kid like myself, he was half Japanese. And Vance was like, oh, we're getting some blues for the fight. And I'm like, blues? He's like, oh, Oxycontin, man. you want in on this? And I was like, nah, I'm good. Having my mother as an RN, my mom worked two jobs through all the stuff we were going through as a child and became a registered nurse when I was in the eighth grade. And growing up, I was always told to ne never abuse pharmaceuticals because ma mainly going into middle school, my mom was doing her residency at Highland Hospital, which is one of the, that's in Oakland, California, and it's one of the largest trauma units on the West Coast. And she always told me, she's you don't want to abuse pharmaceutical drugs for a number of reasons, but if you're ever seriously hurt, those drugs won't work. And I was a little fucking bruiser as a kid. I was always fucking myself up, stitches, all kinds of things. So I, I'd already I'd endured a, a bunch of physical pain, bicycle accidents, motorcycle accident when I was 19, the first one. And they, that was enough to scare me away from pharmaceutical, using pharmaceutical drugs recreationally. I didn't want to get hurt and have that. I, was, <laughs> I have a pretty high threshold for pain, in, in my opinion, uh, from those experiences. But I was terrified to not be able to be medicated if I was in a serious accident. I remember, no, nah, I was like, I'm good. By that time, a lot of people start, start, started using those things. And it was about 10 years later, right around when I was turning 30, around 2009, 2010, that a lot of these guys that had been using Oxycontin for 10 plus years started dropping like flies. And it was all the same story, like they had gone to rehab, came back, they gained a bunch of weight and decided to go back for a normal dose. And that was enough to take them out because their body wasn't acclimated to taking that level anymore. And yeah, there's been a lot of documentaries, Dope Sick and all these Netflix productions to show how evil Purdue and these pharmaceutical companies make billions of dollars off of their evil drugs. So that was like the first like wave of overdoses. And I remember it was about four in the same time period. Vance Scott overdosed. And then there was Tyrone Green, AKA T-Bone, rest in peace, that passed in the same time period. And then there was another two kind of just associates, friends of friends in the wings from West Marin. And that all happened right around that same tent time period. I have other friends that were, one friend recently, I was joking around, I said, it's a good thing you you went to San Quentin for a few years. That shit probably saved your life. Not that there's not drugs there, but literally, and he agreed. He's, oh, real talk, real talk. And the only reason I'm here is because I, I end up getting sent away for a few years. But that was the beginning of it. And I remember it didn't stop for a long time, but it was gradual. And fast forward another 10 plus years after that, pandemic hits and even leading up to it, and we started seeing accidental recreational overdoses. People going in to do cocaine for the first time in 15 years to celebrate like a 40th birthday or something with some homies and getting taken out. Well, I remember specifically a blue collar mechanic that could, didn't have healthcare access to pain management and got a black market fucking codeine pill and it had fentanyl. It was a fake pill and, and it took them out. And these stories have become super common Fentanyl epidemic and drug overdoses is the new cancer. If you haven't been affected already, um, you or someone else will, will die of a drug overdose. 190 people a day in the United States now, and most of that is fentanyl. Fentanyl has affected my, my own family. There's been members of my family that were, that were using it as well. The stuff is so common. It's everywhere, it's cheap. San Francisco has become a fentanyl wasteland. Yeah, I love the Bay, but uh, I'd rather live up here in the Emerald Triangle and have a peace of mind and a little bit of uh, buffer from that whole world. And don't get me wrong, I love San Francisco with all my heart. I, uh, I was born in that city, but uh, yeah, it's turned into a, a zombie fentanyl wasteland and I hate that shit. So pandemic hits and man, I, I probably lost about a dozen people. 
to fentanyl and drug overdoses when people were left to their own vices and they were left to their own demise as well. One, one, one particular instance, I have a good friend that I believe it was suicide by drugs. He had ran out of aid money. His mother had tracked his activity through his through expenditures on his EDD card. And when he ran out of money and tracked his cell phone calls for another few days, this was a couple of years ago already, but it was right around Thanksgiving. I believe my friend Kyle Weiss took himself out underneath the Richmond Santa Fe Bridge on the Marin side, right next to San Quentin. And he wasn't found for a month. And yeah, some Caltrans workers were under there, under there to do some maintenance and they found his bloated body. And that's just one sad story. And I think what's even more sad is that there's all these other kind of mysterious deaths that families and that even certain instances I know specifically that it, it's such an embarrassment that some, somebody overdoses from drugs. They look, most of us use rec drugs recreational to some degree. And that's, the, I think it's the biggest problem right now. But Substance abuse and drug addiction is a disease and needs to be treated as such. There's so much closet dr drug and alcohol abuse, and especially here in California, in this high stress, high level economic environment. And yeah, it's just, it's really sad to me to see how many families can't come forward and be honest with the world with what happened. I think this would, it would help spread awareness and maybe hopefully decrease the rate of that we're losing our brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, sons, and daughters to drug overdoses. 190 drug overdoses in the United States a day is just insane. That's, it's the highest level in American history. <clears throat> One of the highest in the world. They don't have these fentanyl problems in Europe where they do have a high level of cocaine use. They're the other that's what I would say is probably one of the most dangerous, co common hard drugs that I see being consumed by my peers. That, that's the highest risk right now, in my opinion. That and f fake pharmaceuticals. I had a good friend in Southern California that I had to slap him around all night and that was on the verge of Narcanning him to keep him awake from taking a fake Xanax. I carry, I carry Narcan on me just about anywhere, everywhere that I go. I got two doses of Narcan ready to go at any time because I've been places where these things happen. Last summer at Sierra Nevada World Music Festival, the daughter of a Mendocino County Sheriff took some bad drugs and overdosed on fentanyl at the festival last year, which is fucking horribly tragic. My, my daughter's in her early 20s and that's, I, God, I couldn't, even, I couldn't even imagine. And I'm sure the guy has a super hard on for fentanyl these days and yeah anyone that knows me knows that I am a proponent to have the freedom to do what we want with our bodies but also safely if the molecules that we choose to put on our in our body if we can't trust them to be safe we shouldn't be putting them in our body and that's one of the reasons if you follow me online I am still trying to crowdfund to start this organization that I call PPM against FENT and PPM stands for purveyors of plant medicine against fentanyl and I would like to give out free drug test kits at music festivals. The problem that I've came into is that these music festivals cannot obtain insurance to insure their festival. They knowingly have a, a harm reduction organization giving out drug test kits but there used to be an organization they actually produce and sell the kits i haven't seen them at an actual event here in california in a long time because of these reasons uh, dance safe dance safe.org they sell the drug test kits i encourage anyone that uses psychedelics hard drugs or whatever for any whether it's a regular use or uh, once in a blue moon at festivals, dude, test your drugs. The shit is too cheap. They're basically using the same urinalysis test strips. You're just crushing down a small amount of your, your drugs and mixing it with uh, a certain dilution of water, and you're testing it. And it's all you're doing is testing for fucking, for fentanyl. You can test the, those other kits to get test the purity of your drugs as well. But if you're going to fucking party, party responsibly. That's what that means. And it means testing your drugs, not just uh, trusting the person you get it from because there's plenty of people that have accidentally killed their friends, giving them bad drugs. I know a couple incidents of it, and it's survivor's guilt. Even people that took the same drugs, and one person just happened to get that bad line or that bad pill. And yeah, there's the, it's too easy to take the precautions of using these kits. But I think it's a fucking complete travesty that a music festival cannot have these, knowingly have these type of things on site. 
without risking their insurance. That is the whole reason they're even allowed to have these festivals. These venues require this insurance and it's multi-million dollars worth of insurance. For instance, I reached out to Northern Knights Music Festival last summer asking, hey, look, I want to come and give out dr drug test kits. I didn't even want to do a booth. And oh no, we have the we have those things. And I have several people that attended. I was not there myself. So there was none of those services. And I definitely, what I got was lip service through the email. There, there was no harm reduction on site. They had a medical staff, but there was no harm reduction on site. That was trying to enable people to, to test their own drugs. So yeah, my plan is to hit a bunch of music festivals <laughs> this year with money that I've raised for it. We have about a thousand dollars that's been raised so far. It's going to cost about maybe over $10,000 to found a 501c nonprofit, but we'll get there. And there is a GoFundMe. I'll put a link in the description, but I think it's vitally important being somebody that was raised in and around the rock and roll scene in California, but in a time where the drugs were quality, like in the 90s, I did more psychedelics probably in, in middle school, high school than I ever did in my 20s, but I'm lucky enough to come from an area that prides itself on a high level, high quality of all ethnic agents, starting with cannabis, but West Marin is one of the it's like the humble of LSD is a rich history of psychedelics connected to the Grateful Dead and other organizations. But I remember it, it changed that in the late 90s going into 2000s, there was just, I remember there was a lot of just like really bunk LSD. I remember buying ecstasy that was just meth and bad acid. And this was in Chico, California, when we were visiting friends at college. And yeah, that was when I fell out of uh, love and trust of, of doing LSD. I've gotten back into using psychedelics uh, therapeutically in the last six or seven years. That's just one aspect. I think it's vitally important that us as a community come together, stop sweeping these things under the rug and addressing the fact that there are just too many people, too many young people, all people that are dying from drug overdoses in this country. and. Yeah, I look, I look forward to seeing some kind of light in the end of the tunnel because it's not any, ending anytime soon. I think I also think it's very interesting that the cartels in Mexico have banned the the trafficking of fentanyl in certain areas. So you you know that it, it's it had to have str stricken in a cartel family, whether it was an accidental overdose from handling it or some kids got into some of the fake. Uh, I think they're the the M30 pills that have been going around them and killing killing teenagers and stuff. Yeah, I, I took ecstasy for the first time at my senior prom. Um, I, I, I'm still friends with the, 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 the girl that, that gave me that first uh, purple Mitsubishi pill. And that kicked off a long, maybe two, three career of myself selling ecstasy and hitting hella raves and doing the thing. But back then we didn't, we, I wasn't afraid of selling somebody something that might kill them. So some of my friends got into double digits of Thiz pills. That's, Thiz was what it is for a long time. But there was never a, a fear of fentanyl overdose in any of those drugs. But that's not the case these days. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is for everybody, if you're fucking partying, to test your drugs. I was working at a dispensary in Oakland last summer, and this guy came in. And he's like, yeah, I'm the party guy. We got fucking bachelor party. And I'm like, I said, you guys doing any dry goods? <laughs> Referring to cocaine or nasal drugs. And he's like, oh, yeah, man, we're fucking here to party. I'm like, well, did you test them? He's like, what do you mean? I was like, bro, explain it to him. He got on his phone on Amazon and ordered drug test kits overnighted to his hotel right then. And uh, I, I can't emphasize enough how much this education is. Look, I'm not trying to control anyone or tell them what to do with their bodies. That's the last thing I would do. But it is irresponsible to put any unknown sum, unless you made the stuff yourself, which I doubt you did, because there's very few people out there that actually produce their own molecules. Unless you did, always test it. I trust, I have a high level of trust in the sources that, that I get the molecules that I decide to take myself and give to loved ones, but I still test them. It's just, it's too cheap. So definitely these kits can be obtained all, all over the internet, dancesafe.org. Um, it's a great organization, and uh, I had a long conversation with uh, one of the owners basically about the problem of how they were just basically pushed out of doing these things and giving them away. I'm going to have a link in the description to their website as well. And uh, yeah, this is a part, uh, this is a major part about loving people and loving yourself is respect, respecting the value of your life and, you know, as it pertains to, to doing drugs and partying because it, we, we all do it. For the most part, a lot of us do it or have done it. Your kids might do it or probably will do it. 
And uh, I, I, I think you'll be happier to know that they did that than to try to, you know, prevent them from doing it in, in the first place. Because we all know about the story about the forbidden fruit. You try to keep these kids away from something, they're going to go straight to it. And I'm glad that I've always been, been able to have an open dialogue about these things with my own mother growing up and, and raising my now adult daughter who's 23. And yeah, I, can't, I can't thank the world enough to, for the people that it has spared, the ones that were going down that, that road. But I could sit here and continue to list them off. I told the stories of a couple. But yeah, I could probably make an entire another video that's an hour long listing off after writing them all down. I don't make notes for these videos. I just I just come out here and freestyle after I've been on a walk for a little while and I've been left alone to my thoughts. And uh, that was the message I wanted to bring to you guys today. Follow the Instagram. It's at PPM period against period Fent. So PP, PPM against Fent with periods um, between it. That's the Instagram and um, I'll have a link in description to the GoFundMe of uh, helping fund that organization. And uh, I plan on having some of the hottest girls that I know uh, along with me to music festivals to grab your attention. The cute girls has a shirt on. It says, ask me about drug test kits. And um, yeah, and just and help other people have a good time because this all kind of came to me when we saw the all the ambulance and the first responder activity at the music festival and didn't exactly know what happened. And me and my boy Beasel went to the gym and the owner of the gym is is the county sheriff whose daughter passed away and yeah i it struck home with me i started crying i had to call my own daughter and in that moment no matter how much money it takes to execute this thing if i can save one life i can if i can save one one daddy's lit daughter out there one loved one of one person it'll be all worth it because i would give anything and everything just to have one of my folks that's not here anymore uh, from drug overdoses. So let's keep the awareness out there. And when a loved one dies, it's definitely a very private thing, but I don't think we're doing anyone justice, especially the person who's no longer with us, regardless of the situation of how they got there, whether it was a lifelong addiction or it was an accidental partying overdose, it doesn't matter. The awareness is more important than I think honoring the the, the family, and that's just my opinion to each his own, but I think it's important that we share these experiences. I think it's therapeutic for the family, and it's good for awareness for the world, for the children. And my my age demographic, because of the fake pill, the late 30s, early 40s is the largest demographic and the highest rate for opiate overdoses. And fentanyl is a synthetic, but yeah, it all falls under the same umbrella of education. So. I love you all, love over everything, and yeah, take care of yourselves, love yourselves, test your drugs.